Um, just wait for this to go online. Okie doke, we're up. Hello again. Uh, I'm just going to post the link around, get some people in, and then we'll get started, as usual. So this um, this episode because uh, we have uh, a lot of new projects coming on now. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's everywhere I need to post it. So let's get started, and hopefully we might have some more viewers popping on soon. Oh, hold on, I forgot some other places. Give me a sec. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed that <laughs> I haven't gotten a single viewer yet. <laughs> anyway, we'll wait. Did I? Okay, yeah, that worked. Okay, I'm just checking whether I sent it properly. Okay, um, so first step and I'm, I, I've got myself into a rhythm now so let's write down how many classifications, uh, classifications we've got 5019 cool I got that down I need to get a proper pen in here I'm using one of those pens with a cap on them but I don't like them uh, lucky it's luckily it's not that hot today because usually in my room it's uh, gets pretty toasty which it will soon but um, yeah we'll work through it I got my desk fan ready to go when we need it so yeah here we have some new interesting projects so last time we came on um, we looked at the transcription projects which personally I'm not that interested in other people might be interested in it but personally I'm not I can't read running writing it's just horrendous <laughs> it's like looking at doctors writings um, but hey look at this we got four uh, five new projects all right we got radio galaxy zoo which I'm gonna tell you a bit about that we have Power to the People, which is finding rural homes in Africa to expand the electrical grid. Uh, we have the Maturity of Baby Sounds, which is classifying some very short recordings of babies' speech sounds. This will help us to better understand the very first... Oh, that's cut off. <laughs> All right, so it's probably like early childhood developmental sort of stuff. Interesting, because that's, that's some of the stuff that my university actually does. My university has like a... Um, early early childhood um, psychology clinic I, I played a video of it and it's a little bit creepy where they hook up like the you know the little plug things that go on to the brain to like measure brain activity and they did them to some kids with obvious consent from their parents of course but it was interesting they showed the different patterns of stuff depending on like if it was a parent or if it wasn't a parent or yeah all sorts of stuff like that uh, what's this one University of Wyoming Raccoon Project. Help us identify and study raccoons. I don't know why we need to study raccoons. They're not really <laughs> they're not really that much of a threatened species. Um, what's this one? The Nest Quest Go. Wood duck. Explore the curious life cycle of ducks that use nest boxes. Interesting. The one that I'm most interested though is in Oh, it's between these two. I'm going to go Radio Galaxy Zoo. I'm going to do a little bit of learning and figure out how to do this stuff. Um, okay, so we're helping astronomers locate and identify supermassive black holes and star-forming galaxies. So we're looking at radio bursts from different stuff. And Jesus Christ, these guys... Zooniverse does so well. I, this only came up in, like, I don't know how long. It wasn't even that long. And we're already through 171 classifications. And we have 30,000 subjects left. It's brilliant we're already 45 percent complete i wanted to complete some <laughs> save some for me um but yeah uh interesting enough galaxy zoo is uh actually uh one of there's a member of my university i lost the sticky note where i where i had this from but um i remember writing down because my university has something to do with uh galaxy zoo 
uh, Western Sydney University of Australia. Um, and yeah, one of their researchers actually worked on one of the Galaxy Zoo papers or one of the Galaxy Zoo uh, projects. And unfortunately, I lost the sticky note or whatever it was where I'd noted down their name. But yeah, my university actually had something to do with it, which is pretty cool. So let's check this out. Uh, let's go through the tutorial. Okay, welcome to Lofar Galaxy Zoo. In this project, two months back, calls. You started built a dedicated training workload. So sometimes projects do this, where they give you some training data just to figure out how to actually do stuff, and then they'll put you on the real data. It's sort of like training wheels. <laughs> um, there's a tutorial video. Wow. Okay. Um, I'd prefer to just read because usually I can pick it up from just reading. Get to know the interface. Yep. Understandable. What am I looking at? Background image is taken using an optical telescope. On top of that, we've drawn some yellow contour lines where the radio emissions are detected. So yeah, this is, um, I forget the other project that did this, but um, basically you have like a real image, so a light image, and then you have an x-ray image, and then you have a radio image sort of thing. And they're all overlaid each other, and you have all these like little topological graphs and stuff like that, which show the distribution of like radio waves and stuff like that. So yeah, I understand what I'm looking at. What are the ellipses? You'll also see one or more light blue ellipses around the regions of radio emissions that our simple computer algorithm thinks might be separate sources. There will always be one ellipse with a solid blue line. This surrounds the radio source that you're currently investigating. Any other ellipses that may or may not be present will be drawn using dashed or blue lines. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, task one, marking the ellipses. Place a marker inside all of the dashed ellipses that you think surround parts of the same radio structure as the solid ellipse. Uh, ellipse. I should probably stop saying ellipsy. <laughs> uh, normally this means that the radio contour lines within the solid ellipse are connected to those within the dashed ellipse that you mark. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, you can mark a dashed ellipse by clicking somewhere close to its center. This will drop a light blue crosshair where you clicked, which you can move or delete later if you change your mind. If you may not need, you may not need to place markers. You may not need to place any markers. If another dashed line seem to be connected to the solid ellipse, anyway, yeah, just click next. Okay, fair enough. All right, what's this one? Difficult cases. What's this? Radio structures can be complicated, interpreting radio images can be tricky. Whether your emission uh, really connected to anything, it's help you decide you can pair with the image you're struggling with against some particularly difficult examples that we provided in the field guide. Most importantly, do not worry if you're unsure. Yeah, yeah, here you go. They even state it, what I keep saying all, every now and then. Most importantly, do not worry if you are unsure about a particular dashed ellipse. We'll combine your answer with several others so occasional mistakes aren't a problem. There you go. And that's also stops people coming in and just ruining it by just mass just spamming a particular answer or something like that, or giving just fake results. Ah, okay, next. Wait, hold on, whoops. Okay, marketing the optical counterpart. For some images, it might be possible to identify a single source in the optical background image that seems to be gener generating the radio emission. We call this the optical counterpart. To get a clearer view of the optical image, it can help to toggle the yellow contour lines by clicking the small circles. You can see uh, an obvious single optical counterpart. Then your task, your second task is to place a pink marker at its position. As before, you can drag the marker. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at an optical counterpart. So hold on, if we go back, was that the... No, it wasn't. No, what about this one? Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's cool. Right. Okay. What's this? <laughs> Something's wrong. Uh, you don't say. <laughs> um, can we zoom in on this? Oh, I should have zoomed in on this for you guys. Sorry about that. Uh, should have, almost all images we show you can be usefully classified. However, there may be some cases where it's not. <laughs> Artifact, yep, uh, yeah, I know about artifacts, that's fine. Blend, so like if you believe that one of the blue ellipses contains two or more unique radio sources. 
What does that mean? Select this if you believe that one of the blue ellipses contains two. Oh, okay. So if it manages to go around two different radius sources, fair enough. Uh, two zoomed in. If you think they're part of a. Yeah, fair enough. Image missing. Fair enough again. And all other. Alright, let's go. Zoom out a bit because this is actually already pretty zoomed in. Alright, so. Now, we gotta select the different radio sources. Oh, no, sorry. We gotta. Select the dashed ellipses that I think belongs to the same thing there. Now. I think that those are different radio sources. So I'm going to click next. Misses. Okay, okay. So it looks like they want us to be. Whoops. Hold on. Go back. Okay, so I think it wants us to, to do this. Okay, so it looks like it's very specific. Like. Even if it's connected by a tiny bit, it still counts, I think. So, we'll see. Yep. Okay. Yep, well done. Okay, host galaxy selector. So, um, where is... This should be just the optical counterpart. So, I think clicking just there would be the optical counterpart, right? So this does sort of look like a galaxy, because like you got the center there, and then you have like the out wing sort of thing. I don't know what it's called, I'm not an astronomer. <laughs> uh, right, cool, we found the optical counterpart, that's good. Alright, there is nothing that we need to specify here. I'm just going to zoom out a bit, because the image stays the same, but it's helpful if I can see the full thing here. Um, okay, blend, too zoomed in, yep, no, that's fine, done. Whew, okay, um, this one's an easy one. So, we have this big blue, big solid blue one around this big radio source. And it looks sort of like a pulsar. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a bit. Um, but yeah, so those two are obviously connected. And these ones on the outside are not. And a Presta. Um, well, obviously it didn't like me clicking on the <laughs> on the middle one, but that's that's fair enough. <laughs> um, okay, host galaxy selector. Let's go to the optical counterpart. Right there. Next. Perfect. Okay, and if you're just joining, we're doing the training set, so we're only on our training wheels. Nothing special here. We're just learning how to do this. So I'm, I'm already getting the hang of it. Uh, ooh. Oh my, um, this one's a tough one, uh, I think I'm gonna, wait, hold on, there's something wrong with that image, <laughs> there's nothing there, <laughs> look, there's nothing, there's nothing there, <laughs> there's nothing there, <laughs> why is it focusing on that? Why, why is that a match? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so hold on, wait, wait, what's in the complex cases? Okay, let's see. Okay, occasionally find images, okay. Is, is that the only one? Can I scroll down on this? Okay. It is the only one. Ah. <sighs> At first glance, you might think that the three radio components in the image are associated with the top and the bottom ones being part of the radio lobe and the one in the middle. But if you look closely at the optical image, you'll see that each radio component has its own optical counterpart source. Okay. The thing is... <laughs> with this... <laughs> oh wait, what's special case sources? Okay, what do we got? Star forming galaxies. Okay, yeah, but, oh, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Mm, they do not seem to map any compact radio structures. This often makes potential as. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to cover the case like we have here where. Uh, and if you've just joined, basically what we have to do is we, can, we have to compare the solid line radio emission to the other dotted line radio emissions. And we have to say whether they're connected by clicking on the middle of the um, ellipse of all of them. 
And with this, there's no real reference source here, and yet it's saying that even on the thing, it, we have to connect all those all those four. It, it just doesn't make sense. But anyway, we'll continue. Oh, whoops, we got the counterpart. Anyway, just click that. It's a training set. Um, okay, yeah, this one's easy. That one's not associated, um, as it shows. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are looking for an optical counterpart, which looks to be that little part down there. Because look, it, uh, the radio mission goes like up, like that way, so it's, it's like steaming off. Um, so yeah, there's that. Next. There you go. Click OK. And there's nothing wrong with that image. Hey look, a galaxy. Yep, that and that. Next. Perfect. Okay, and I guess we're just going to the straight bang into the middle of that, yep. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yep, uh, it's too zoomed in. Done. <laughs> Alright, now let, let's get on to some real stuff, okay. Let's, uh, I think, do I go to classify? No? No, go here, right. Okay, associate and identify. Let's just get cracking. I'm only going to do a couple of these because I want to go check out the other projects. Um, all right, let's get going. So, this one's one big radio source. So, uh, yep, that one seems to be a good one. Next, host galaxy is obviously right there. And there's nothing wrong with that image. Whew. Yep, these are two... Three completely different radio sources, so... Uh, is there... What do we do in... That case, do we... Okay, we only select it within the... Solid one, by the looks of it, so... Um... Hmm. There doesn't really seem to be a galaxy center right there. Because we have... That's a star, so we're not going to mark that. But there is a big emission right here, and something down there. Uh, that sort of looks like a galaxy to me, but um, I'm just going to go with that. Next. And... Wait. Whoops, hold on, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold on, I was on the wrong one. <laughs> okay, there we go, pink marker. That's what we need. Uh... Wait, there was an issue where there might be two radio sources in one of them. I think this looks like that, so there, there might be there might be two radio sources. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna click blend, like a blender. Okay, uh, there's no components here. It looks to be a host galaxy right there. Looks a bit weird, but I don't know. Let's check the field guide again. Um, Asymmetrics. What's symmetrical sources? Okay, yep, fair enough. Asymmetrical sources. Hmm. Weird. Anyway, I'll mark that as the galaxy center. <laughs> Even though that seems a lot more brighter. Um, actually, we're going to click Blend, because there appears to... Hold on, what was Blend again? The blends. Blends, here we go. Multiple compact contours. Yeah, there you go. Look, Blend. Incorrectly associates two or more radio sources. So, wait, hold on. Uh, what's the rule for... Is there a rule for... But no clue tomorrow. Okay, so is, I guess there's no rules on whether to put a galaxy center on it but there you go uh, actually I might yeah it's not gonna hurt so I'm just gonna put another one there next and then blend <laughs> hey look we have a asymmetric source um, uh, this one's hard um, oh whoops my fan is doing the spinny thing let me stop it oh there we go <laughs> I need to stay cool, but it keeps trying to run away from me. Alright, so uh, what do we got? So that's a source right there. The thing is, this... <laughs> oh, this is a difficult one. Um, 
believed to belong to the same structure. Oh. Oh, well, some of it belongs to the same structure. I don't know why the computer managed to detect that. Um, I... Oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the same structure? Uh, I'll, I'll put it down. Uh, there's no blending, there's nothing there. Uh, I'm gonna click other. Oh, hang on, what's artifacts? Let, let me just quickly check artifacts. Close to very bright, running in a combination. It's generally brighter when close to the fire, sometimes pink and white. Um. Sometimes fails cause radio contours to appear that have no real origin and therefore cannot be associated with the optical source. Mm. Not sure whether to call that an artifact. I'm not. Mm. Just gonna click other just in case. Um, but yeah, there we go. Alright, that's all unassociated. Next, uh, host galaxy center. So give me just the optical image. There's nothing there, so chances are it's just probably like one big galaxy, so just stick it in the middle. Next. Oh, this one's cool. Alright, uh, there's no other things there. Host galaxy center right there. Easy. Done. Alright, uh, what do we got now? Hmm. That's not associated, so that's next. Host Galaxy Center right there. Next, and uh, no, that's all good. <laughs> Jeez, the computer's doing pretty well, isn't it? <laughs> next. Looks like we don't have to do any of that selection, but we just gotta find the galaxy. Ooh, um, okay, so that's one. Uh, now. Hmm. I think that's going to be the center. Even though there's a star there, those are two stars that are in front of it, and we're looking specifically for galaxies. And galaxies sometimes are hard to find. So, uh, so sometimes some stars in front. It's like looking up in the sky, but all the street lights are on, so you'll see less stars, just like sort of this. If there's more light coming in front of the galaxy, it's going to be hard to see the galaxy. Next. Oh, there. <laughs> oh, there's the line. Okay. Uh, that's attached. Next. Where's the center? I can't see any center. <laughs> So, I'm not going to select a center. <laughs> um, just leave it. <laughs> okay, uh, this one looks like it has two galaxy sources. I'm going to refer to that as blend. Actually, no, that, no, that might be the center right there. Let's go back, erase that. Next, unclick blend. Yep, it's unclicked. Okay, done. Alright, I think I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to move on to another project. <laughs> I think that's fun. I like it. It's a little bit tedious, though. But let's go take a look at some images of Africa. Specifically, are we in any specific place? Kenya, Sierra Leone, or Uganda? Hmm. Could roll a die and figure out which one. Uh, but I sort of want to see Uganda. Let's go. Let's zoom in on this so you guys can read it and see it. Take a look at these satellite images. You can see any homes. Cycle through additional images. Yeah, so basically we're just looking for homes. <laughs> if you select yes, we'll ask you to draw a box around each home in the building. Keep the outline as close to the edge of the building as possible. Got it. Easy enough. Let's go. Alright. I don't see any homes there. Uh, can you see anything that you think may be a home building? No. That looks like, like a farm. Again, that looks like a farm too. Nope. <laughs> Done. Hey, 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 we got some homes. Yes, let's go. Okay, let's draw a box around them. Wait. 
Oh, okay. We gotta tag some data on this. Let's go. All right. What's the color of the roof of this building? Brown. Uh, we'll just shave this roof of building. Square, rectangular. Okay. I think I'm just gonna zoom out a tad, just so I can get those things. Okay. Um. Uh, let me just. There we go. Perfect. All right. It's brown, square, rectangular. Done. Uh, we do individual buildings, so that's one right there. Brown. Jesus is so trivial. <laughs> okay, square rectangular. Um, uh, there seems to be some buildings here. Uh, brown square rectangular. Oops. No, no, no. I just want to fill that in. Brown square rectangular. Okay. Brown, square, rectangular. Uh, okay. Sorry, I was just checking some of the message I've received, and uh, no, there is no one in the chat room at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. But either way, I like listening to myself ramble on. <laughs> Alright, um, square, rectangular. Yep, yeah, right. That is other, but it's still brown. That one is square rectangular. Uh, there is a home right there. Brown, square rectangular. At least this is sort of fun. I like this. This isn't too bad. This is nice and easy. It's an easy project for beginners to get onto as well. Alright, um... There's a building right here, brown, square rectangular. I'm not sure if that's a building or if that's a farm. It might be a construction site, you never know. Brown, square rectangular. Okay. Uganda looks like they have some pretty good farmland. I wonder what their agri agricultural GDP is. Next. Oh, whoops. I forgot to say no. <laughs> uh, oh, this one, yes. It looks like yes. I'm used to those projects where, like, um, uh, all, all you got to do is, like, if there's something, you click yes. Otherwise, you just click done, and you just keep skipping. Uh, brown. But anyway, an error here and there is not going to matter. It's, this is um, the power of the crowd. So even if you get a little bit of it wrong, it doesn't matter. Brown, square, rectangular. Okay, done. Nothing there. Whoa, look, there's some homes. Yes. Okay. Uh, just making it better. All right. Ooh, other square rectangular. All right. There's a. Uh, not sure. I think that's a little shed. All right. Other square rectangular. Oh yeah, that looks like a shed. Oh no, not a town! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, this is gonna take so long. I think I'll just I'll finish this one, and then, <laughs> uh, and then, and then I'll move to the next project. All right, that's white or light colored so, uh, square or rectangular. That one there is another one which is white colored square rectangular. That's brown square rectangular. I mean, I don't know if these towns are like like super rural, like they're like tribe towns or something like that, or if they're actual like actual towns. <laughs> But if they're like rural towns where like people are still just living off the land, why do they need electricity? Like, are they gonna use it? I mean, I haven't been to Africa, so I've, I can't really assume anything. But I mean, are they gonna use it? Or would they be much happier living without the electricity? Hmm. That sort of looks like the reflection of a solar panel, if you ask me. Maybe they already do have electricity. These could be solar panels. You know, you don't know. 
I heard that Africa is really good for solar power apparently. Like they, they've got a booming solar industry or something. At least what I've heard. Brown, square. It's sort of hard to see roads here. Are there any roads? You can see an obvious road here and like down there, but like, what about this one? It's just completely cut off. Anyway, uh, that's that. Done. Uh, I'll just go until I get another one with homes. Oh, yep. No, I'm out. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not identifying everything in that town. That's just no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the patience for that one. All right. I think I'm just going to quickly take a look at this one because I'm not particularly interested in this. So I'll, I'll let the baby psychologist do everything. But we might as well just take a look at one of them. Um. Get started. Uh, so what are we doing? At every trial, you'll be presented with a sound file. Simply click on the file to listen to it. Oh, so this is like, um, this reminds me of a project known as, um, Mozilla Common Voice, where you get to listen to a thing that someone said and then match it to like the words that are presented and whether it matches exactly so that you can train machine learning algorithms. So this might be something like that. Adjust the volume of devices and manually. Da. Whoa, okay, da. I said da. Alright. Oh jeez. No, stop. Stop. What the hell is that? It doesn't even sound human. What's this? Click on the image to... Oh, okay. The image is playing. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we can control it. How loud is that? Okay, so that's pretty loud. Okay. Um, canonical vocalizations. Uh, both consonant and vowel are considered canonical babbling. Fair enough. Yep, yeah, nothing. Canonical laughing, crying, junk. Alright, yeah, that seems easy enough. Let's go. I might try. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in this, but I mean, if you're interested in it, go for it. Uh, I don't know, my university does stuff like that anyway. Let's take a look at some raccoons. Let's go. What do we got? Whoa, pellets. Wait, we can click on that image? Oh, it's a talk subject. <laughs> oh, look, there's a little fox there. <laughs> this image appears to show a fox and a raccoon around the same box. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so yeah, you can find stuff like this in here. Actually, I'm going to put that in the next tab just so I can put it as a highlight. Right, let's get started. Let's see what we have to do. Welcome to the University of Wyoming Raccoon Project. We are a group of animal behavior researchers that study nocturnal urban wildlife. We need your help reviewing the footage from one of our experiments. Okay, what do you need? Draw a box around the species you see. Wait, there's... Oh, okay, no. It's just, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say there's more than one species of raccoon. <laughs> All right, um, yep, yeah, that's easy enough. Humans, yep, fair enough. <laughs> There's a skunk. Made a mistake. Yep. Yeah, as they say, don't worry too much about if you make a mistake. When to mark. Sometimes the animals will not be easily visible. Rule of thumb. If you can see one third of the animal, uh, if you can see the animal's face, or if the, or if you can see the animal's entire tail, you should draw a box around the visible portion of the animal. If not, do not draw a box around that animal. Okay, fair enough. One bounding box per animal. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, need help. Yeah, continue. How cute are they? See any interesting... Can you just click on the heart icon? Yep. That's what we need. This seems pretty cool. Alright, do we have any raccoons or skunks or anything? Let's zoom in a bit so we can get a better idea. Um... Oh! Alien! <laughs> no, there's no aliens in here. <laughs> I'm pulling a um, Vinny from Vine Source, I think. He did Signal Simulator, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Just like, whoa, UFO, did you see that? <laughs> Alright, yeah, nothing here. Done. Hey, look, there's a human. Let's get him. Bang. Done. Ah, uh, I might have to zoom in on this one. What's that thing on the edge there? What's this? 
Looks like it's photoshopped on. I don't know about you, but it looks photoshopped. It's a lot of pallets. Yeah, nothing, nothing there. Done. I wonder if these cameras, whoops. I wonder if these cameras, uh, wait, I can, no, I can't do that, okay. Um, I wonder if these cameras go off because of movement. If they do, I'm wondering what caused the movement for this one. And the ones that don't have anything in them. It could be a snake. I mean, in Australia, you'd be worried to walk here because of those wires. Like, are they snakes or something? That's Australia. Yeah, anyway, nothing here. I can see some like lights in the distance, but nothing interesting. I think is that a tail? Behind there. I don't think it is. It's too blurry to see a tail. I don't see any raccoons or anything in there. Oh jeez, this is some hard ones. Um Is that something there? I don't know. Maybe. I could always label it with other. Like, that does look like a skunk or a raccoon, but I don't know which one. It's too blurry. Anyway. <laughs> I'll just leave it empty. <laughs> If you don't know, it's usually really late when I do these live streams, so I guess that's why I'm yawning. Uh, let me just check if anyone's messaged me in the other chats. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Yep, no, okay, no messages on the other chats. And it looks like there's nothing here. Come on, I want some action. We already came across that image. There's nothing in it. I swear, I've come across that same image as well. There's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there. I've come across this image again. There's nothing there. <laughs> um, I mean, we could zoom in. Really, there's just nothing there. Hey, there we go. You got some action. There's a big raccoon. Alright, done. Oh, I gotta sneeze one sec. And no, I do not have the coronavirus. <laughs> Alright, let me a second blow my nose. Oh, okay. So yeah, winter's coming. Expect that to be a new norm. <laughs> Not coronavirus, but um, I guess me getting cold and coming and doing Zooniverse. Uh, there's nothing there. Uh, I don't think we have anything there. There is something interesting in this, and so it just looks like a lens flare. Um, don't know what that is. And nothing there. There's a raccoon. Just bring that down a bit. There we go. Nothing else done. Oh, this seems to be another angle. These cameras are absolutely terrible. And actually, they're not just terrible. Why? I think the lights are just what's running. Because you get all this lens flare. Like, why would you put lights there like it just it just doesn't seem like and these are nocturnal as well why, why would you oh 
Oh, my music stopped. Give me one sec. Go. There's a raccoon. Done. This seems pretty easy. Just flick through them. Oh, UFO. Just identify it with other. <laughs> yeah, that's a satellite for sure. Look at that thing. <laughs> Pardon me. What is this? It looks like a bacteria. Anyway, there's nothing there. Nothing. Jeez, this is boring. <laughs> Why would you be watching me <laughs> do this? Just get, go do something else in your life. Why don't you go do some Xenoverse? Oh, th <laughs> oh, that was a big raccoon. <laughs> that would have been a big raccoon. Alright, uh, that's a human. Honestly, I think I'm seeing more humans than raccoons in this. Oh, hold on, look, there you go, there's two raccoons. One. And two. And done. Nothing there. Okay, um... I think that's a fox. Based on the tail, because skunks don't don't have that sort of tail. Let's let's take yeah, because look, skunks skunks have like a bushy tail, with sort of like a thing on it. But <sighs> yeah, that's a fox. Let's go with that. <sighs> Oh, hold on, I think I got a message in another chat. Or was it on this one? It was on this one. What was that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Why isn't anyone watching me? <laughs> I used to get like consistent five or six viewers, but now I just get nothing. <laughs> I mean, I have a YouTube, so you can come and watch on my YouTube if you want. There's another human. Done. Oh, I got a message. Oh, that's coming out. I should probably mute Telegram. Oh, I just know. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me get my link to the channel again. Uh, how do I mute Telegram? I'm not sure how. Anyway, I'm sure you can live with it. <laughs> There's no one <laughs> watching at the moment, so. Oh, hey, look, another fox. Is that. Is there something in there? Looks like an. Like, that definitely looks like something. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's Bigfoot. It's not Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> that, that could be a human. I wish I had a better. I wish I had a good audience on this because like you guys can help me out here. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in as an other because I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> and it's a fox. And there's another one. Oh, whoops! No, fox. I think that was the same image where the one that they said there was a fox and a raccoon. Yeah, nothing there. Eh, there's one. Got him. He's trying to rob the bank. There's two of them there. Rob the food bank. Yeah, nothing I can see there. You might find if I find one more fox, I'll leave. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> Alright, let's go to another project. What do we got? We just got the nust. Uh, the nust. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Duck and nest. Nust. 
<laughs> okay. Explore the curious life cycle of ducks that use nest boxes. Oh, it's another transcription one. I don't really want to do this. <laughs> mm. Yep, I'm not interested in transcription ones, but if you want to know about transcription projects, you can always go to my um, uh, other uh, live streams which I uploaded to YouTube. Um, but yeah, I think I'm <laughs> pretty much just about done here. Uh, unless I miraculously get about three viewers right now, I'm going to leave. So let's see how many. Uh, oops, let's see how many things that I made. Five eighty-six. Uh, so I did around. 60 classification so not too bad I usually average around 100 but for this one we were learning about some things so uh, we obviously had to not do that many classifications so we were learning I'm gonna blame the not so much classification as I'm learning but I like my little I like this little thing that they do they give you a little proportion of how much you've contributed I do a lot of bash the bug because that's on mobile and floating forest is on mobile again so that's that's good as well they got some new data uh, I also love my muons oh we, hold on, we gotta end with muons I, I can't do an episode without ending with muons because I love my muons uh, if you don't know how to do muons we're just looking for circles so just go click on the circles but some of the circles don't look like circles because they're half cut off um, I'll show you some good examples of some tricky ones because I'm an expert in this now. I know which ones are muons and which ones are not. Uh, and to me, there are no other muons here. Next. Here we go. Majority not muons. This one's harder. This one's a muon with a background shower. If you look closely, you have the muon on the outside and then you have something in the middle. I'll show you the field guide. We're going to chop chop. Let's go. Bang. Muon plus shower. Bang. See the muon? There's the shower. Gamma rays and protons. Doesn't matter. Still muon. Click select. Alright, done. No other muons. Chop, chop. Let's go. Uh, majority not muons. That, that. Uh, that's not a muon. That's a gamma ray. That's a gamma ray. Uh, that's also a gamma ray. That's also a gamma ray. None of these are muons. Here we go. We've got some more muons. And so basically, we're looking at computer images that select one image and say to itself, okay, I'm going to select all the similar images. So you'll notice that. This one's not so clear, but a lot of the image seem to have something in that sort of section of the image, where like these ones are pretty good. Um, as for the other ones, questionable. But I'll show you a good one when it comes around. So yeah, that's not a muon, that's some other sort of shower, because that doesn't form a perfect circle, or and its circle isn't that big of a radius. So, next. Uh, here's a good one. Notice how there's a little blob in that portion of the image, and you'll see that the blob also appears in all the other images, and how it's always in the bottom right corner. Well, there you go. Sometimes the computer's bad and doesn't know how to detect muons. Or rather, um, when it picks an image that's not a muon, theoretically, you would get similar images and the similar images would not be muons. So, uh, we're here to show the computer that it's wrong sometimes. And maybe we can train the algorithm to do better. And this is why we're here. And probably the reason why not a lot of people do this is because it's really, really boring. <laughs> None of muons. I try and make it fun. Uh, actually, how many um, classifications are they up to? Yeah, they're still on 32%. Uh, I was here when it was all the way at like 5%. So they have a lot of... They've gone through 643 classifications. Holy crap. That's a lot. And so they've completed 26,000 subjects. Wow. So yeah, they need some help with this one. Uh, majority not muons. Click that. So if yeah, if you can help out with muons, that'd be great. I'd really love to see this project um, get completed. Uh, that's not a muon. That's not big enough. It's more or less a gamma ray. It's sort of straight, so it's not not much we can do about it. Next. Uh, this one's going to be tricky because it's going to be around that side. It's going to be really tight. That's not a muon. None of muons. None of muons. See, I'm an expert in this, so I can just look at it and say, no, no muons. No muons. And... No muons. Oh, this one's tough. You can see a faint muon in that one. 
That seems like two gamma rays patched together. No, no, no. No, none. There's one. There's another one. Done, let's go. Alright. Uh, I don't know how many more I'm going to do. This is sort of addictive for me. <laughs> it's like chain smoking. Once you do one, you can't do all the rest. And please don't chain smoke. <laughs> That's not healthy. That shit's not healthy. <clears throat> let's go. Muons, muons, muons. More muons, muons, muons. Next. Uh. Muons, majority not muons, that one. Muons, muons, muons. What if there's a Pokemon named Muons? Because I sound like that Pokemon. All I say is Muons. Muon, Muon, Pika Pika. Muon. Muon. <laughs> God, this is terrible. <laughs> Muon, Muon. Okay, I'm gonna stop. No, uh, no, 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 hold on. Majority are not Muons. There we go. If you don't know what Muon is, it's basically an electron, except it's like really, really big. Not so big that we can see it, but like it's really big and it's really heavy. Like, as in. Like, you know how tiny an electron is. It's like super tiny, right? Smaller than the size of a proton or even an atom. So, they're really tiny, but a muon is probably around 100 times larger and heavier than an electron, so uh, the, mu the muon is just bigger and heavier generally. But I mean, it's not really significant on a, like, a, s a scale we can see with our eyes. And also interesting thing about muons is that they decay very quickly, so you know radioactive decay? Well, muons sort of do something like that, except it's not exactly radioactive because it's not an atom. <laughs> Uh, rather, it's a fundamental particle. So rather than decaying into some dangerous isotope, it just decays into uh, basically an electron, and then it just gives off some energy in the background. That's all, really. That's a muon. That, that's interesting. That's a muon with a lot of background radiation in it. It's probably got a little bit of interference. That's two muons in one. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going to put a heart on that one, because that's uh, two muons in one. Um, that's a tough one. I'm going to leave it. Majority and not muons. Alright, uh, I think we'll just do this one more. Don't, no, i got to do one more. Come on. Okay, good. None of muons. Next. Done. Okay. There's no muons in that one. <laughs> Alright, let's go. That's it. I'm done. Alright. Did we make 100 classifications? Hey, we did. Look at that. Actually, exactly 100. Wow. Look at that. Brilliant. Alright, so I'm going to close off now. So I'll see you guys later. If you want to watch all my past streams, you can check out my YouTube. I should really put up a link onto the dashboard of like Twitch or something down below my stream. But... This will be uploaded to YouTube, so you can also go check it out if you missed out, and uh, you can check out all my other ones. Um, next time, uh, I'll either be doing this, or I might be doing Fold It. Um, if you take a look at my streaming history for the last day or two, um, as, as this video is being made or uploaded, um, you might see me playing Fold It, which is a different Volunteer Science game. And actually, I just realized, my chat says Volunteer Science with Fold, fold It. I forgot to change that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, I'll remember to do that next time. Uh, <laughs> oh, I feel bad now. I should have changed it. <laughs> Don't worry, anyway. Um, it's all volunteer science. It doesn't matter. Uh, next time, hopefully, I might have a tea if it's cold enough for a tea. Because uh, it is still basically summer here. It's almost... I actually, no, it's autumn now, I think. It should be autumn. I mean, it feels like summer. It's, it's Australia, what do you expect? Um, 
but yeah, I've played Fold It before. If you don't know what Fold It is, it's, it's basically like, um, it works with proteins, and it's got 3D models of proteins, and you have to model proteins and like solve puzzles, and it's really cool. So, um, hopefully I can do a video on that, and maybe I can do a video on that, but, but it, basically the last episode was just basically me learning all the basics once more, because I already learned the basics a while back, but i got to learn them again because I, I dropped the skills from that. Anyway, um, I'll see you guys next time. Who knows what I'll be doing. I'll make sure I have the correct title next time. <laughs> see you later.